African drums are talking. Through fertile valleys and on to the highest mountain tops, the rhythmic beats carry their message. Africa, a land of primitive impulse, mystery, juju groves, and jungle. Professor Anton Edwards and his little scientific party in Africa have encountered many dangers in their search for a lost race. They quickly moved their camp by the Bakari River because of a tribe of hostile cannibals, and after a week's march, come to a mountain range which the professor determines to scale. With him is his daughter, his assistant Jack Martin, and the faithful Nguru, a huge Maasai bodyguard who carries the talking head in a basket. Oh, but I'm tired, Father. When we get to the top, do we we make camp? Yes, we'll probably stay there for a day or two. I want to look around. Oh, darn these mosquitoes. One of them just took a piece right out of my nose. Well, if it swells up as much on you as the bites do on me, you're going to lose your beautiful profile, my dear. I'm pop Terry, Jack. (laughs) My face has gone right back to nature already. Yeah, there must be some stagnant water around here somewhere for these mosquitoes to breed. I uh, hope you didn't forget the quinine, Jack. No, sir. You'll find some at the bottom of your haversack. Father, I meant to ask you this before. Did you hear anything moving around after we turned in last night? No. After that long climb yesterday, I went to sleep as soon as I hit the pillow. Oh, it was probably some animal, Lorna. What? Well, I thought I heard some loose stones rolling just before I went to sleep. A uh, mountain goat moving somewhere above, as I expect. The nearest humans to us are the porters we left at the base camp. Yeah. Oh, heavens, that awful head gave me the jitters. Does it have to do that? Yeah. Yeah, that's the first time it's talked for days, Jack. Yes, I hoped it had gone to sleep for good. What did it say, sir? Uh, just the usual instructions. Go north. It doesn't seem to worry and go a bit. If I was carrying that basket and it let out a cackle like that... I know, I'd drop the thing. Uh, mind that boulder as you crawl by. Oh. <laughs> Looks as if the least push would send it rolling down the mountain. I'd hate to get in front of it once it started. The rain's washed the base almost entirely away. You know, it's strange we haven't seen any signs of life, Jack. You notice there are no small animals scooting out in front of us as they did yesterday? Yes, I have. So have I. Ever since that great big rat ran over my foot yesterday, I've been keeping a lookout. <laughs> but I haven't seen a thing. What's the answer to that one, sir? I don't know. But there must be a reason somewhere. Father, you'll have to stake me to some new boots when we get back to camp. The toes of these are almost worn out. Well, not much further to go, my dear. In a few moments, we'll be at the top, and we'll see what we shall see. What's the real reason for all this climbing, sir? I know you're out after data of the country, but that's not the whole reason. We're on the second day away from camp, and you act as if you were going into entirely unexplored country. Can't you youngsters wait until we get to the top of this mountain and see for yourselves? Well, I've noticed such strange formations of rock lately that I've become curious. I'm so tired of climbing, I want to have something to look forward to. What's that moving over there? Hmm? Where? Way over there. Uh, Probably a herd of mountain goats. Mm. Well, if you must have it, these mountains behind us have been scaled by others, but I don't know of anyone who had the patience to come through those valleys and try this one. Well, what's the hunch, sir? Did the head tell you to come up here? You don't usually go mountain climbing just to be the first. Well, to be perfectly frank, Jack, this inner range has always intrigued me, and I wouldn't be satisfied if we passed it by. No white man has ever reported on it, and we might find something to make those old fossils at the academy sit up, hmm? Well, you can tell them that it took us two days to climb, and that I left my mosquito net behind, and the little pest got bigger as we went up. <laughs> the darn things do look something like small hummingbirds, don't they? No, I know. You're to be the first over the top. Come on up here. I'll give you a lift. Well, that's an honor anyway. Well, I'm too tired to be thrilled. Well, are you ready? Yes. All right. Over you go. Oh. Oh. You next, Jack. Up. Huh? Uh, let me give you a hand, sir. No, oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. Your turn, Unguru. Wana, Nguru no make Fopi goat, no make Fopi eagle. <laughs> Come on up with you, you old grumbler. Take that basket with the head with you. 
Now, Jack. Look out, I'm coming over. Well, now that we're here, I hope you're satisfied. Jack, you see what this is? It looks like a huge crater to me. That's just what it is. The whole of this inside circular range is one huge volcanic crater. Look at those trees down below. They're peculiar-looking trees, Father. What on earth do you call them? Come on, people. Down to that ledge of rock. What did I tell you, Jack? Those trees alone are enough to make these stay-at-homes envious. <laughs> what do they remind you of, eh? Why, they look something like a weeping willow turned upside down. Why not? Devil look them. Now, now, huh, huh. Great Scott. What is it? Don't shoot, Jack. I want to take a good look at it through the glasses first. Well, it looks like a dragon out of some fairy tale. A lizard, Jack. A lizard that size, sir? Why? Yes. No wonder Unguru said a devil was looking at us. It's a lizard grown out of all proportion until it looks like a small alligator, but twice as ugly. <laughs> don't shoot it unless it comes to attack us, but I don't think it will. Juana, this place home for devil. Devil hand pull Unguru hair. There's another species of tree on that ledge there. Isn't it a grotesque-looking thing? Great heaven, if that's a tree, Father, I'll have to go back to school. I must have missed something. Hey, you've missed nothing, Lorna. Don't you children realize we're in another land? It's a world that science seems to have missed or forgotten. Haven't you noticed the difference in the air you're breathing since we came over that rim of rock? What? Why, yes. It seemed to get warmer all of a sudden. It is warmer. The air seems to have a bracing effect. I was a little tired a few moments ago. But now I feel ready to lift a ton. It's oxygen. That's what Nguru felt when he said his hair was lifting, Jack. <laughs> ah, this is marvelous. The whole inside range makes a huge crater. Well, then it must be at least a uh, hundred miles across. Look. Look over there. Good heavens, it seems to slope down interminably. Can you make out the bottom of it with the glasses? No. No, it just fades and fades into nothingness. The sides are lined with a thick white volcanic dust. Juana, Juana, look. What is it, Father? Why, it looks like an ostrich or a great chicken. There's a big lizard chasing it. You cover the bird, Jack. I'll take the lizard. All right. All right, go ahead. Yeah, well, I guess that stopped them. Good Lord. Seems as if the mother of all chickens was coming at us to avenge the eggs we'd eaten. <laughs> you and Nguru fetch the bird here, Jack. I want to take a look at this peculiar tree. Is that a kind of fruit on it, Father? No, I don't think so. No. Oh, they're leaves. But look, they're, they're half an inch thick. And they look just like human hands. Uh, nevertheless, they're leaves. I'll pick one and show you. There. You are... Now, you see the formation? Why, it's covered with skin and veined exactly like a hand. Oh, oh, look at the branch you picked it from. It's bleeding. And the hand is, too. Good heavens, so it is. But don't look so scared, Lorna. It's just a uh, red-colored sap juice. Oh. Not blood. Oh, throw it away, Father. Looks too horrible for words. Well, there you are, sir. It's a wingless chicken. But I'd hate to have to eat a leg at one sitting. It weighs a hundred pounds if it weighs an ounce. Why not? Devil blow so-so for chicken. Make them plenty big, huh? Oh. Is that how you account for it? What did he say, Father? Well, Guru thinks that devils have breathed into these chickens and expanded them beyond all reason. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a species of chicken, all right. Why? What's the matter with your hands, sir? Hmm? It's covered with blood. No. No, it's not blood. It's, it's a peculiar red juice from that tree. Isn't it horrible? Oh, that thing bleeds just like a human being. Take a good look around you, Jack. Use your glasses. You too, Lorna. All right. Why, this place is alive with those huge lizards. Well, and there are some more of those large chickens over hey. there. You notice anything peculiar about those trees? Well, they're the funniest trees I've ever seen. Nothing, sir, except they're a species I've never come across. And yeah, no one else has ever come across them, Jack. We're the first. But what I meant was the animals avoiding that one that looks, as you said, like a uh, uh, weeping willow turned upside down. Yes, they do seem to give it a wide berth, don't they? There's a reason for that somewhere. I'd like to go up and find out. You're both wrong. There's a chicken going straight towards it as it feeds. Hmm? Look! Yeah, so there is. Yes. Well, I guess I was wrong. Well, what did you think it was? One of those poison ones? Wait a minute, sir. 
Look, the branches of the tree are moving. They're straightening out and coming down slowly. Watch it closely, Jack. What's it going to do? Oh, look! The branch is suddenly dropped around the bird. See it, Jack? See it? The bird is being lifted up. Oh, oh. The bird's gone. And the tree looks the same as before. Good heavens, sir, what kind of a country is this? Oh, that was horrible. That poor bird didn't have a chance. It was gone in ten seconds. Buana, him devil tree catch him chop one time. Mm. Huh? It put that chicken right in the center where the top of the trunk must be. Must have a mouth. Guru says it's the devil inside the tree, and even devils must eat. Oh, don't talk <laughs> about it. Oh, I'm glad we found out before going near it. What if, what if you'd gone there, Father? Would it, would it eat human beings? Would it eat human beings? Well, well I, I don't think I'll go close enough to find out just yet. <laughs> <laughs> 